take up 716. Um, and that bill is up on our documents. Is that right? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming. And I know how difficult that is. I was your next door neighbor for six years in the committee room next door. And I was there that day that uh, Jim referenced, I recall. But thank you very much for your consideration and your support. It's good to see you. Um, so I'm trying to remember who I, oh, I think I was gonna start with Paul Lefebvre. Are you here? I'm trying to see who's here. I am Madam Chair. You are, good, okay. So um, committee, this is another bill that we got. Um, <clears throat> so we got this from House Natural Resources, Fish and Wildlife. Um, and we got it on March 12th. Um, and so I don't believe we've looked at it before. I don't think so. Uh, so I'm gonna start, I think with you, Paul, if it's okay. Um, I know you're the reporter of the bill. I think you're also the um, sponsor of it. Um, so if you could, I'm hesitating a bit here because I can't remember who else I had lined up. Lewis Porter, and he's here, and Dan Dickerson is here. Okay. So Paul, why don't you sure. go ahead and identify yourself and tell okay. us about the bill. Okay, fine. Um, I am the presenter, but I'm not a sponsor. Oh, okay. Although uh, I did amend the bill and it was passed. But anyway, the, the bill uh, uh, strives to um, uh, grant free hunting and fishing licenses to all members of the four recognized Abenaki tribes in Vermont. Uh, and uh, uh, <laughs> there's the bill also requires that the uh, Fish and Wildlife Department in 2022 gives us a report on how many licenses were actually handed out under this provision. Uh, there is some concern as to really how many licenses this will amount to because we are aware of how many, uh, how many people are in the four tribes all. Uh, and estimates are difficult to come by because each tribe has its own rules and regulations who can become a member. For instance, if, if an Abenaki marries a, um, a male uh, outside the tribe, uh, and which tribe she's a member of, they can either be a member or not. It's not need. So there was, a, there was a little discussion there. And it was all, um, it was also the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, exception that if you were living out of the state, that were a member of one of the four tribes also be entitled to free hunting and uh, fishing license. So that's the uh, the basic bolts of the bill. We had 13 witnesses, uh, strong support from the Lieutenant Governor and the Attorney General. Um, the Commission Fish and Wildlife uh, expressed some concern over the uh, financial impact it would have on his department. Um, but uh, went ahead with the bill thinking it was a long time in coming. Uh, these rights had been guaranteed in a uh, late 17th century treaty known as King Philip uh, Treaty with the, uh, with the uh, white settlers, basically in New Hampshire and Massachusetts. And um, we thought we were basically redressing an oversight and putting this bill together. And uh, we did get strong, strong support from members of all four tribes, with the exception of uh, one of the chiefs, a woman who took exception to the fact that uh, no, one, no one person could speak for all four tribes. And I think she felt that she had not, or her tribe had not been really well represented. And she expressed concern um, uh, about whether or not the impact would, what the impact would have on the Fish and Wildlife Department as far as its programs go, uh, the, uh, the, it's it's uh, camps and it's uh, and it's hunting uh, courses and things like that. Uh, they came out of committee 10-1. 10, 10 
Okay, um, let me see if there's questions anyone has. Um, uh, Sam. Uh, hi, Paul. Um, hi, Sam. So I, 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 I saw a letter from one of the tribes saying that they didn't support the bill. And I, so we have four state recognized tribes. I was wondering what the breakdown is of how many support it and how many don't. Well, I, I don't believe there was any kind of vote taken among all members of all four tribes. The woman that I remember who spoke to us and sent us uh, some testimony was, a, was, a, was one of the chiefs of the Cossack uh, tribe, a Shirley Hook. And uh, she seemed to take uh, someone, take umbrage over the fact that uh, uh, the uh, chief of the uh, uh, the Nohegan tribe, uh, a man by the name of uh, uh, Donald Stevens, uh, was getting um, uh, recognition as someone who's speaking for all, all the Abenaki people. And so she voiced her, uh, uh, her opinion that he did not. And uh, in, her, in her letter she sent to us, uh, she, uh, she said she was concerned as to how it would affect the Fish and Wildlife Department's uh, conservation camps its fishing derbies and um, you know basically had a had questions about its overall impact on the department um so um i have a uh, uh, this is doing this by zoom is this this is where it's challenged <laughs> i have a letter um that says that um chief shirley hook and chief wood have already sent letters of support. This is a letter from Carol McGranahan, um, who is sending a letter of support. I don't know where those letters are. Um, and so I'm, I don't, I'm not basing that on seeing the letter. I'm just telling you that the information yeah. I have is that, that there is a letter. So um, I, um, I guess I wanna know whether Sorsha has seen such a letter. Um, Representative Ansel, I have not seen anything okay. All about right. the correspondence so, on this. Yeah. So, um, so Sam, I don't, I don't have a straightforward answer, but I was going on the assumption that all four tribes did did support this, but based on the information I've gotten, um, and I don't know if that's accurate or not. Certainly, three do, uh, from what I've seen. Uh, Scott and Pat. Paul. Um, yeah. this, I guess I suppose this might be different for each of the four tribes, but how high is the bar to become a certified citizen? Well, basically, uh, uh, it's you have to be a member of a tribe in which is recognized, of which the state recognized. And uh, I believe it's up, as I say, the rules and regulations among the tribes are not uniform. Uh, uh, there, uh, so there's, we didn't really get, or I don't recall receiving any uh, blow by blow, uh, point by point discussion as to how someone became a member of any given tribe among the four uh, that are recognized in the state. Uh, that's. Uh, Could I become a member of a tribe? I, I, you know, that would be up to the tribe in which you wish to, uh, I, I'll you just step in. You have to be either, in your case, I think it would be a question of whether or not you married uh, uh, one of the women of the tribe. But I mean, I, what if I just wanted to be part of a tribe? I can't, I can't do that because of some sort of- I don't think that would work. Well, I, I think they, they're looking for people who are, can show their Abenaki roots, either through genealogy or any documentation they may have. Uh, I don't know what all, uh, uh, what all goes into that documentation, but I, uh, I don't think they would take, they take, I think they take membership in the tribe very seriously and just would not hand it out as a favor. Okay, I mean, I don't, I don't know what, you know, once you become a member of the tribe, what that is entails, but um, I just would, well, I mean, it's, this is, this is a significant benefit. I wouldn't want to put ourselves in a situation where we have, um, you know, 
people becoming members of tribes for for so they can get a free hunting and fishing license. That 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 uh, concern or fear was 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 really never spoken to, but but by all those chiefs who came in to speak to our committee, uh, they took great pride in the fact that uh, the state had recognized them as a as as a as an Aboriginal people, as a Native Americans, and I don't think that's something they would just give away. I, I, I you know I I I can't I can't tell you exactly. How, how much goes into becoming a member, but it, I, you know, I believe it's not uh, something they, they, uh, they, they, take, they take easily. But it sounds like what you're saying is there's a racial threshold. Well, yes, there probably is. Okay, thank you. Uh, Pat. Uh, thanks, Madam Chair. Uh, my question is back to um, revenues and, and what, uh, what kind of a hit that the agency uh, may be taking? Do you have any numbers on that, or did you discuss that at all? Uh, yes, before, uh, uh, if, yes, remember we did discuss it before Paul answers. Um, Dan Dickerson is here with a fiscal note as well. So, um, if you want to wait for Dan to uh, present that, or just have Paul answer. No, I, I think Dan might have some hard numbers for us. I'll wait. Yeah, he does. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me see if there's other questions on the part of the committee. Um, Scott, the question you asked is, um, I suspect um, that if the Natural Resources Committee didn't go over that, the General Committee probably has information on it because they do a lot of work on Native American issues. But um, if you want me to try to reach out and get information, I can. Um, I, I don't, I'll reach out to them. That's, I okay. can do that, save yeah. you some time. Yeah, but I think that's that's where the information tends okay. to be. Um, uh, let me see if anyone else on the committee has anything. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift the order of things a little bit um, and have Dan present the fiscal note, and then we'll go to Lewis Porter and uh, Steve Gomez. Um, so, Dan, are you prepared to do that? Yes, I am. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, good. Okay, um, so in the fiscal note, um, under fiscal summary, basically there, there are two areas where um, revenues would be impacted. Um, the first being that, that sales of annual and five-year um, licenses would go down, which would have an impact on fish and wildlife operations. And then um, the sales of lifetime licenses um, that go into a trust fund for future use by the department, I think mainly towards land purchases would also be affected, although to a much smaller extent because sales of lifetime licenses are, are smaller. Um, so I based my fiscal note on a population of 6,000 members, and this was taken from um, a seven day, uh, it was either seven days or a BT digger seven days article. Um, so I, I didn't confirm that number with four tribes, but what I did do is um, I looked at uh, five year um, census data and based on that, um, you know, between people that claim, um, well, let me make sure I get this right. People that claim American Indian or Alaska Alaskan Native heritage or a combination of, of American Indian, Alaskan Native, and, and white. Um, it's about 7,500 people. Um, there are probably some others that may be a combination of other ethnicities. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't presume that would the 7,500 would be just the four tribes. There are probably other folks that have heritage. So I think the 6,000 number is probably pretty close. Um, I don't know if that makes sense to everyone. Um, and then from there, I looked at um, data that I'd gotten last year um, from the Fish and Wildlife Department when they, um, uh, I think when, actually when the House Fish and Wildlife Committee had gone over the fee changes, uh, the department had provided data on license sales. And so I took the, you know, the percentage of the Vermont population that buys licenses and I, or uh, Vermont, 
population within the certain ages that buy licenses. And I applied that to uh, the 6,000 members of the tribe. Um, so it's imperfect. You know, I don't know if, if um, the 6,000 members of the tribe tend to buy hunting and fishing licenses more or less than the Vermont population. I didn't want to assume one way or the other. Um, so I thought the cleanest way to do it is just apply the percentage of the entire Vermont population that, that buy li buys licenses. Um, so based on that, uh, under the annual and five-year licenses category, I assumed, um, or I estimated that there would be a thirty to thirty-five thousand dollar impact annually um, to the fish and wildlife operating budget. Um, most of that is is what I would presume to be Vermont residents, um, but there's some portion that would potentially be non-residents in that. Um, somebody living in New Hampshire could apply for, for tribal membership or tribal citizenship and then be eligible to receive the free license um, or the, yeah, the free lifetime combination license. Um, so I, I built some cushion in for non-residents, but I, uh, that's very difficult. Um, that part is, is difficult to estimate. Um, so I, there's about 5,000 cushion in there for that. Um, and then going to lifetime licenses, I assumed, you know, based on once again, on the percentage of, of Vermonters, um, that by lifetime licenses, that there are probably another 10 to 20 individuals that may, you know, going forward may have been inclined to purchase a lifetime license now won't because they're eligible for the, the free combination license. And that would be a loss annually of, of five to $10,000. Um, because that goes into a trust fund, you know, that money wouldn't, wouldn't earn on, um, the investments. And so the impact would increase from there. Um, but it's not, it's not a huge amount of money. Um, and then at the end, um, you know, I just made a general statement on, on how COVID-19 might impact, um, you know, license sales going forward. Um, the bottom line is, you know, short term, it sounds like it's been good, but long term, you know, I, there are a lot of unknowns, um, you know, and uh, so it's hard to make a prediction. Um, but that is the fiscal note. Uh, great. Let me see if there are questions. Um, uh, Pat, did you have questions about the fiscal note? Yeah, you go ahead. I think you're still muted. Okay. So I do have a question um, based on uh, some of the information we just heard. And I'm wondering, I get the physical impact, the fiscal impact uh, uh, to the agency, uh, to the department. But I'm wondering, you, you kind of hit me with something I hadn't heard before, and that's non-residents being a member or possibly applying to be a member of one of these four tribes would then be eligible. And that to me, um, that's a, that's a non-resident hunting license and somebody from out of state is going to walk into Vermont, apply to be a member of a tribe or maybe already a member of the tribe, but living out of state and are going to be eligible for a free lifetime hunting license that that kind of blows my mind um and i think that the revenue impact would be much larger than what we're estimating here uh especially given the circumstances it's already a given that more people are going out and buying hunting and fishing licenses now given the times passes the time and maybe uh maybe they will uh find out that they enjoy the outdoors more than they thought they might and, and be hooked on hunting and fishing. So I'm really concerned that we are hitting a, an already underfunded department. Uh, we all, I think we can all agree that fish and wildlife is woefully underfunded and has been for years. Um, and then hitting them with, a, you know, 
what we're saying to be thirty or forty thousand dollars, but what I'm thinking might be closer to eighty to a hundred if if things really catch on, and that concerns me. And and it also, you know, from another viewpoint, concerns me that, um, you know, I'm a native Vermonter, been here sixty seven years, and I waited sixty seven years to get my free permanence, and now we're we're handing them out to other native Vermonters, in my opinion. Um, it just it doesn't sit that well with me, and I'm concerned about the revenue loss in particular. That's more of a statement than a question. I, I get that, but uh, I, I I do think the the estimates are low. Thanks, uh, Jim. Um, two things I can address. One is um, there are out of state members of the tribes. In many cases, they are members of the same family. In most cases of the people under consideration who live, you know, in one town or another. They're not people who wandered in for him here, there, or the other. Um, and they, uh, as as Paul said, different tribes have slightly different membership rules and regulations and whatnot. But they're all. Um, they're all established, they're all either able to establish Native American genealogy, Micmac, um, Abnaki, or whatnot, or are married to one. So um, I don't see the out-of-state problem as really being an is issue at all. And, uh, and yeah, some hunt, some don't. It turns out that I'm Native American, Abnaki, and Micmac, but not a member of one of these four recognized tribes, so I'm not entitled to my free license yet. But thank you. Uh, before I go to other questions, um, uh, Sorsha, did you have a chance to post that letter? That, so I made reference to a letter of support earlier, but I didn't have it. Um, yes, it's, it's on the website now if you refresh your browser. Okay, and can you just post it, do a screenshot of it so that um, people can see it? Um, Right. Um, so th this is a letter that, um, oops, I'm, I'm trying to move it. Uh, if you don't mind showing the, the signers, I'd appreciate that. Um, this is a letter from Chief Ravenwood and Chief Shirley Hook, which, which were the two that I had not seen letters from, um, but I understood that they exist, um, that uh, support H716 as it is. So um, I just wanted to close that loop so that everybody had the same information. Um, so I have a question from Robin and from Sam. Sam, is it about the letter or the support? Uh, why don't you yeah. go ahead? I, I was just gonna say, I, I was confused because I had one from a week earlier that said the opposite. Right. Yes, so. and that's why, I, that's why these letters were written is to clarify and um, so on. So I, I, my apologies for not having it available earlier, but it's here. Um, so I, it, it just occurred to me, it's a very weird thing to pass a bill that somebody doesn't want, or there's a big disagreement about. I just wanted to get that clarified. Yes, we had this on the schedule last week and that's why it went off the schedule. <laughs> so, exactly. Uh, Robin. Thanks, I wonder if I might ask the representative from Natural Resources if your committee discussed this out of state um, notion uh, people getting free licenses who don't live in the state of Vermont and what that conversation was like and why you decided that was okay? Uh, certainly, um, I, I, the conversation revolved around people who live on the other side of the river, the Connecticut River, and maybe in Maine. Uh, we didn't think it extended much further than uh, the, the general uh, vicinity of the three states. We don't believe that anyone from Oregon, who's going to come over and claim a membership in that any particular uh, tribe? Uh, it would seem to us the numbers we were considering who might be out of state and wanting to uh, wanting to take advantage of that uh, of the bill were, were minuscule. Um, Sam, and then I'm going to go to Lewis Porter. Yeah, uh, Paul, uh, that just kind of brings up another thought to me, which is. Uh, what about the northern border? I mean, this was 
I, I don't know where the, the Vermont tribes extend to necessarily, but it, might, it was always my impression that there was a lot of going back and forth to Vermont from, from Southern Quebec and up to the St. Lawrence, traditionally. I just, I don't know where that is now. Yes, that came up, but I guess, again, we didn't, uh, we didn't assume it would be any, any, any great problem or any great numbers. Uh, I'm sure there are some Abenaki folks who live in uh, Quebec, uh, and, uh, and uh, maybe our members of one of these four tribes, uh, but I don't think uh, we're talking a, a, a lot of numbers here at all. Uh, let me, let me go to Lewis Kruger has, um, I think he's still here. Yes. I am. <laughs> how are you? Um, good. How, how are you doing? I'm doing um, Madam, <laughs> as, as well as can be expected. Exactly. Um, yeah. <laughs> you have uh, Madam Chair, I have, have Callous Internet. Sorry, go ahead. You have Callous Internet, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're freezing up. <laughs> so um, go ahead and give it a try. But you know, if you turn off your video, um, we can probably hear you. He's also on mute. Yeah. Yes. Can you hear me okay? Better. Yes. Thanks, Lewis. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, no, no, thank you. Um, I have with me uh, Steve Gomez, our business and licensing manager. And Madam Chair, would you like me to have Steve join me as I go along, or would you like me to go and have him take notes and then follow up? Uh, you, you, you can do uh, any way you like. We don't even have to put two chairs at the end of the table. So uh, <laughs> sounds <laughs> sounds good. We'll we'll attempt the two chairs uh, remotely here um, first. I would like to say that I, I think that this bill uh, recognizes a, a very long standing uh, and very significant injustice and makes a gesture towards, uh, towards recognizing that. I, I won't say undoing because obviously the, the land rights and, and other rights that were contemplated uh, in those treaties and which were, and which were not uh, followed through on are, are much broader than, than a fishing and hunting license, but but uh, I do just want to say that it, it does recognize a, a long-standing injustice. Um, having said that, I also am in the in the position of of making this bill, if it passed into law, operational both financially and and from a from a management standpoint. And so I just want to go through a couple of uh, of points, and then happy to take uh, questions or, or comments uh, on them. Um, I agree with Representative Brennan. I think the joint fiscal uh, note, while as good as could be done with with existing information, uh, probably does underestimate the the impact of the of the license. And in part, I think that's due to the fact that uh, people are much more likely to utilize a service that's free than one they pay for. Uh, price price point does matter, and price does matter, including in hunting and fishing licenses. There's sort of two ways to look at that. You can look at that and say, well, it doesn't, those are folks, if those folks wouldn't hunt with the cost of a hunting license or a fishing license, then it doesn't matter because you're not actually losing any revenue. They, they wouldn't have been providing revenue into the system in any case. The other way to look at it is that we provide services, biological and in law enforcement services for everybody who hunts and fishes in the state. And here's a group of, of people who would be uh, participating for the first time or participating when they wouldn't have been otherwise, uh, but we will still be providing those services of various kinds. So I won't make a judgment call about that, except to say that I think that that does underestimate to some extent um, the, the amount of participation that will change based on, on these free licenses. Um, to, the, to the raised by a couple of representatives, uh, the other statutory uh, permanent licenses that we have are restricted to residents of Vermont. Those include those over the years of ages of 66, as Representative Brennan noted, uh, the legally blind, uh, those who uh, those who are paraplegic, 60% uh, disabled veterans, 
and the Special Olympics Fishing Tournament. So uh, I also recognize the, the point made by uh, Representative Maslin and Lefebvre uh, that these uh, Vermont bands, tribes, uh, were not restricted by the borders of Vermont and that they have uh, members who uh, live outside the borders and family members who live outside the borders and uh, and and that they are also members of those of those groups. Uh, we do have a little bit of a insight into the use by non-residents through our uh, lifetime licenses. As the committee knows, we we sell lifetime licenses uh, to Vermont to, to to kids in Vermont, primarily those under one. Uh, they go and move around the country as as many of us have done uh, or before coming back or or for for our lifetimes. Uh, what we know from our license numbers is that many of those Vermont kids come back from the far flung corners of of the world they go to to participate in hunting and fishing. That's a great thing in my opinion, uh, and I think the same would be true here. Also, uh, a good thing here, but I do think you would see uh, members of those groups return to 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 participate as as the uh, owners of uh, the holders of of uh, lifetime licenses do. Um. One thing that, that I'm not sure makes uh, a, a huge difference from a, from a uh, fiscal standpoint, but I think should be noted is we are talking about these, these licenses as, uh, as a loss in annual revenue, but th they really are structured more like our permanent or lifetime licenses. And the way that the, that the uh, lifetime licenses in particular work is we, we gather that money from, from people, primarily uh, parents of kids who are under one, and we, then, uh, and we then put that in a trust fund to fund those services when they reach the age that they would have to buy licenses in a normal, uh, if they didn't have lifetime licenses. So uh, this, is, this is giving uh, uh, lifetime licenses but not adding to that trust fund, which I think has the risk of exacerbating our already existing problem in the trust fund of, of uh, getting the revenues up front and, and providing the services later. Uh, the department has done a lot under Steve Gomez's leadership to undo historic uh, uses of that trust fund, dipping into that trust fund and to try to restore that trust fund to a healthy state, and and that's one of our one of our uh, maybe quieter accomplishments. But an accomplishment we're we're proud of is restoring the fiscal balance to that trust fund, so that we we've undone to some extent past uh, mistakes by the department when we use that money for operating expenses rather than leaving it in the trust fund. I, I'm not sure uh, th this has a similar question to the to the it, our additional users actually increasing the costs or are they merely not providing revenue they wouldn't have provided in any case but I do think it's worth uh, worth noting um, the uh, the uh, another note that I think it is worthwhile is the bill contemplates that parents would would certify that their minor children are uh, are citizens of the state recognized tribes uh, I think that creates a pretty big lip loophole unless we were to require that the parent or guardian is also a member of the of the tribe. In other words, I could certify that my child was uh, even if she wasn't and uh, and I, th I think it should be should be restricted to the parents or guardians who are also members if that makes sense. Uh, I'd also like to uh, suggest that we that there's a report back in 2020, uh, 2022. I'm sorry, um, that would only include one year of license uh, revenue, license sales. So uh, it would just be the 21 license year. And what we know from our from our requirements on uh, that people uh, check in if they're going to use permanent or lifetime licenses is. It takes at least three or four years before people uh, catch up on what's going through, uh, what's changed in terms of licensing operations. So even with our best efforts at outreach and publication 
word of mouth still counts for a lot and it can take several years to catch up. So I would suggest that, that report be moved out uh, to a couple of years later so we get an accurate report out on, on what's happening in terms of these new proposed uh, permanent and lifetime licenses. Um, I'm also uh, un unclear on whether we would need language in this um, bill or not to require that people go through hunter safety before they could hunt under one of these under one of these licenses. I suspect that the requirements of hunter safety would still apply to these and that this is is more or less a, a change in fee. But I would want to make sure that our that hunter education is required and that there's a mechanism for uh, for enforcing fish and wildlife laws and revoking such a license um, as we do with as we do with another license or suspending such a license as we do with other licenses. Uh, and then last, I would just note that the um, effective date should be January 1 of 2021, I would suggest to match up with other types of with all of our other licenses, which go on a calendar year basis. Um, I will just end by noting that uh, that the uh, in the House Natural Resources Committee, I suggested that the Fish and Wildlife Department uh, cover half of the cost of this bill as if it goes into law, and the Attorney General's office cover the other half as the Attorney General is a supporter of this measure. I, I'm not sure the Attorney General appreciated my suggestion very much, but uh, but and in any case, uh, House House Natural did not uh, did not go forward with that proposal. Um, with that, if I could, I would turn it over to Steve to fill in any gaps or correct uh, or correct anything that I said, and and uh, and then we're happy to take questions. Lois, before we lose you, um, I uh, want to be sure I know what the recommendations are that you made. You wanted to remove the report date out to to what date? I would say give three years of active license. So move the report date out two years to 2024. And 2024. And the, I yep. understood um, the parent, uh, your recommendation that the parent should also be a citizen. Question about hunter safety. And then the effective date was January. Um, I'm sorry, what date were you recommending the effective date? Uh, I would. I would say effective January 1 of 21 to match up with our other licenses. Okay, and did I miss the, other recommendations that you made or were those the, uh, other than sure, having the AG? Uh, no, those are, those are them. I, I would just, I guess it would really be a question for your legislative council if hunter safety and violations would be handled as they are for other licenses. Okay. Um, Avil Camfield and Robin and George all have questions. Hi, Lewis. Uh, nothing was mentioned. You haven't said much about the conservation camp. Do you see a hit on that? Uh, well, to to the uh, I don't know if it's directly to the conservation camp. Um, I have uh, you know I have to I I present you with a balanced budget. I am already uh, working on a new. A budget that contemplates at least an 8% reduction in general fund per the governor's directive. Uh, and while we have seen an increase in fishing license sales this spring, it's unclear if those are uh, merely people buying earlier in the year or a true increase in revenue. And, and I won't even go into the, the Byzantine effects uh, that are going on in the federal aid system right now to spare the committee. But long story short, uh, Representative Canfield, I, I have I have a lot of budget pressures, and I have one uh, line item that, or one area that makes up most of my budget, which is personnel. Um, and so I would have to figure whatever this, whatever the actual dollar loss is, uh, uh, I will have to figure that into my budget for future years. And and conservation camps are part of that budget. We operate the camps at a loss, but so I don't know that. I don't know that there's, there's nothing specific to conservation camps. Just going along with the, with the way this is reading, the folks who belong to the tribe that live out of state, their children would come to the conservation camp too? Uh, they, they could come to the conservation camp now and nothing would change that. I, I'm not sure 
Uh, I'm not sure what Representative Lefebvre's reference to the conservation camp was. There's, I don't think there's anything specific in this change to conservation camp revenue or operations. It's just general to the department. Okay. I'll, I'll set Thank Bill, you. Uh, yep, Robin, thanks. and then George. Yep, just quickly, um, Janet, I wasn't sure if I heard on your list of things that we wanted to change. One of the things I had written down was also the ability to revoke or suspend licenses. Yeah, I guess I was including that in the hunter safety sort of compliance okay. section, but okay. yeah, right. I okay. didn't should have mentioned it, I didn't. George. Um, thank you for joining us, Mr. Commissioner. These recommendations that we just listed, if five or so of them, <clears throat> did you make those recommendations to the Fish and Wildlife Committee? Uh, some I some I did and some I did not. Uh, there's been you know a significant amount of time and an amendment to the bill since I testified in that committee. So of the ones that you did make to them, they they chose not to include some of these recommendations already. You know I I I, uh, I honestly can't remember in my testimony which of those points I raised and and which I didn't and I, and I apologize for that. The only one I'm aware of is is having the Attorney General um, uh, eat part of the cost, and I know you made that, and I know that was rejected. I I, I, I I believe we did talk about um, the I believe we did talk about the the uh, the revocation uh, based on on violations or the suspension based on violations, and I believe that the House Natural Committee. Uh, thought that that was covered, that that was not an issue within the within the bill. But I will defer to your ledge counsel or to Representative Lefebvre on that. And then my other question is, um, if you gave an opinion, I didn't hear it, about the um, non-Vermont residents being given the, the license. I share Representative Brennan's uh, concern about that. I am honestly of, of two minds personally about that representative bill. Uh, on the one hand, we do restrict other types of, of reduced cost or free licenses to Vermont residents. On the other hand, uh, it seems to compound the wrong done to the tribes to impose a state boundary requirement that was not historically part of their of their lives or their tribal organization. Does that make sense? So I, I'm, I'm genuinely of two minds on that one. Um, anyone if, else? If, if oh, sure. you had to make a recommendation one way or the other, what would it be? We can't put both in the bill. I think I would defer to, the, to Chief Stevens and the requesters of the bill who felt as though uh, having this be open to uh, members wherever they whether ever their residents of would would uh, would uh, be the 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 proper way to show deference to that. So I I think I would defer to Chief Stevens on that. To put it another way, you're not recommending we make that change to limit it to Vermont residents. C correct. And and if pressed to make a, a decision, or I, I would I would not limit it to residents in deference to the chief's belief that. It should be open on residents as well. Are you all set, Bill? Uh, George? Yeah. Uh, Jim Maslin. Yeah, a um, couple of things. Um, following up on what um, Commissioner Porter just said, I uh, I would agree with the out-of-state membership. I mean, there are, there are members of a family who are neighbors here who now live in Massachusetts and would come back from time to time. And they're every bit as much Abenaki as those that remain in the neighborhood. Um, the other comment that was made back a while ago, a question about whether or not a parent of a one-year-old would have to establish that he, she um, was a member of, a, of one of the Vermont tribes. I think that's quite reasonable actually. Uh, and, uh, and that shouldn't be all that burdensome. After all, if, um, if it takes a little bit of time, okay, but who's gonna go hunting when he's one-year-old? So, I mean, that can be worked out. That's not a big deal. So I just, because I don't want to get mixed up about it. The bill requires that the minor be a citizen of the tribe. And I think what Lewis Porter was recommending is that the parent who certifies that also be a member. 
that's the part that's not in the bill, not, not. Um, I think that's necessarily implied, but it's not stated. I mean, for instance, if I'm Abenaki, my children are also. Um, but that some, some mechanism for establishing that I think should be, or if the, um, if I go, my kids are grown up, but if I were to go get a hunting license and the clerk would ask me um, if I'm a member of a tribe and I had a membership card, then that should do it. Uh -huh. Pat. I think we're saying mostly the same thing, but with a little bit different. Not really, but that's, it's fine. Okay, not, not to worry then. I'll look at the bill. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, that brings up a question, um, and I don't know who is uh, best suited to answer, but what if, what about a, uh, a marriage between an Adnaki and um, a non-Native uh, American, uh, and I'm asking because I don't know, does that uh, preclude the a, a sibling, one of their um, children from, do they qualify as their 50% uh, Native American at that point, would they qualify for lifetime license? Representative Brennan, I, I may be able to shed some light on that if, if the chair would like. Sure, go ahead. Thank you. So the bill, uh, the bill contemplates um, that, that the, the membership of the, of the various tribes or bands are, are set, the mechanisms are set by them, are not, the state does not have any involvement in that, nor any vision, vi visibility into it. Whenever somebody showed up at our licensing office with a card that said they were a member of the band, we would issue them a license. We would not have a role in determining who is eligible or not. And so I suspect that I suspect that the, the, the from what I know that those children would be, I think that the spouse, the non uh, the non uh, uh, Native American tribe spouse, would be eligible in some cases and in some cases not. But in any case, the bands set their own tribal uh, recognition or tribal uh, identity requirements. And if they show up at our licensing office, we issue them a license. Uh, Madam Chair? Uh, yes, go ahead, Paul. Uh, thank you. Um, I just get a word in here that, yes, the uh, I must uh, point out that in the bill, it does read that a person who is a certified citizen of one of the state recognized tribes uh, has that credential on him to show that he has indeed been accepted as a member into the tribe. And secondly, uh, the, uh, the, the, the commissioner is correct in terms of the testimony we receive. Uh, each tribe seems to have its own, its, its own mechanism for uh, allowing uh, or uh, membership. But I would also like to point out that none of the uh, uh, Abenakis who testified before us all stressed, rather all stressed that they would comply with all state game laws. They're not asking for special treatment here. Basically, they go back to the, tre uh, the treaty the land deeds of 1796 by King Philip, which said that in, in exchange for the land, these Native Americans would receive hunting and fishing uh, rights in perpetuity. And that's, that's really the ethical basis for this bill and this claim. So I just wish to point that out that, uh, you know, that uh, uh, outside of the, uh, outside of those rights, uh, uh, the Indians got four bushels of corn and beans for the uh, for the transaction. So it's it's it, it, it isn't as if I, uh, we're giving away anything here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't see other hands at the moment. Um, uh, uh, Janet, I need to jump in. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, I I was still. Uh, <clears throat> I think what I'm hearing here is that each one of the four tribes has their own mechanism and Paul, you can jump in or, or Lewis for determining um, eligibility. 
<clears throat> and I'm and none of them seem to be in sync with each other. So that kind of worries me. Um, like here, here's here you go. Here's have a card. Um, I know you married uh, my sister here, and uh, you know, and your neighbor. I mean, I I just don't. There's no real uh, mechanism set in stone that makes this a, a predictable process. So that concerns me. Um, and I, if anybody has a better answer and, and can tell me that I'm wrong about that, um, I'd be happy to hear it. Um, um, yes, I want to only point out, uh, uh, Pat, that uh, through much of the 20th century, uh, uh, the Abenaki felt themselves to be a persecuted minority, and they say they got by by being, they hit by being seen. So consequently, they, they didn't uh, uh, step forward with their, with their uh, Native American identity. They, they more or less tried not to make an issue of it. And when, in the testimony we received, a lot of them, they were only half a dozen or so, but there was a certain amount of suspicion as to whether or not they wanted this bill because they were afraid it would bring them more into the limelight and they would have to go through or deal with a whole new wave of uh, discrimination. So I, 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 I just add that as a, as, a, as a cautionary note as to what's, what's really kind of unfolding here in terms of how we try to kind of square Square history with with our, with our present day uh, laws and, and regulations. Uh, thank you. Uh, let me see if there's other other questions here. I guess I uh, I'm going to go back to the tax revenue and just make one brief statement, which is that this committee has been open and willing. Uh, to look at a fee bill for this department in addition to many others. Um, and we really um, have not gotten um, a, a request from the administration to do that. And we continue to be open to doing that. Understand that this is a hit on the Fish and Wildlife budget, but um, I think it's a bigger problem than this bill creates. We stand ready to look at that issue. Madam Chair? Uh, yeah. Um, okay. I just. I would be uh, I would be uh, uh, irresponsible, I feel, if I didn't make one more note for the committee, which is uh, that that this is a good and and uh, worthy thing to do. This bill, um, the Fish and Wildlife Department has been called on for a long time to do many good and worthy things uh, that we don't get paid for including Act 250 review, including search and rescue, including voting enforcement, uh, and many, many others. And I understand this is it's really a, an issue, a question for your colleagues in, in House Appropriations. Um, but uh, but to just given the, the point you just made, I would just say that uh, what the committee, what, what, the, what the department really needs is not an increase in hunting and fishing fees, given the uh, amount borne by those who hold hunting and fishing licenses already, and given the declining numbers on the hunting side, at least, mm. uh, contemplate is uh, additional sources of revenue from uh, those who engage in the regulatory review process to those who use fishing accesses but do not pay into the system now to others um, to continue to support the work. And, and this, is a, this is a good bill doing a good thing uh, it's one more example of of a of a uh, of a good thing that we that we don't have a revenue source to support. And I, I take your point on our recommendations to the committee, and I will continue to work on that. So thank you for hearing us and for considering that, and in the broader context of this. Thanks. Thank you, and I appreciate those comments. And I'm looking for um, a note that I have from um, Amy Sheldon which I can also share with the committee, but um, the uh, uh, House Natural Resources Committee, uh, I'll read it to you, but I'll also forward it to Sorsha so she can post it. But she says that our committee should know that House Natural Resources is committed to finding alternative funding for fish and wildlife, um, and that they have a bill that sets up a study committee to compile all the work done to date on funding options and make a suggestion for next biennium. So um, it, is, it is a problem um, and it's a problem that's really gonna require the administration and the legislature to work together. Um, and I 
I, I think um, I appreciate your statement that this is a worthy bill. I think it's, um, it's not, it's not a perfect way to correct Iran, but it's an important way to correct Iran. Um, and um, I'll leave it to the committee whether they want to um, look at the suggestions for changes. Um, I, I don't think given the time that we're going to vote it this morning, I thought we might be able to. But um, what I'd like to do, I guess at the moment, is find out from the committee um, maybe sort of a sort of general um, sense of support on the committee for the bill, um, and then a question for people about whether they want to um, make changes in the reporting deadline, um, the effective date, and the requirement that a parent that certifies is also a citizen. <clears throat> we'll also get testimony from Legislative Council on the compliance uh, kind of issue that was out there. Uh, Jim. Yeah, I'd just like to go back to the point on the differences in tribal membership roles from, from tribe to tribe. And I would say, kind of following what um, Lewis Porter said, that, that each tribe um, can determine its own ro roles as it sees fit. But the differences among them are really slight. The issue is, are you Abnaki? Is one of your parents Abnaki? Can you trace your roots back? And if you can, you are. If you marry someone who's white, um, well, she's your spouse or he's your spouse. Um, they are members of the tribe and their children have Abnaki blood, Abnaki heritage, and that shouldn't make a difference here, I think. That's um, the, the tribe band, as Lewis also sometimes said, um, determines that, that these individuals are a member of the tribe and that should be sufficient. It's not a, uh, it's not a, uh, um, what can you do for me kind of thing, a quid pro quo, it's do you have Native American blood Northern tribes or not? So I just pass that comment on. Um, so for the committee, um, uh, I, I'd like to get a sense about general support for the bill um, and not, not a vote, but I just wanna know, um, if there is, if there are enough votes on the committee to support the bill, um, and I don't know exactly how to do that because I have two hands up at the moment. Um, so, I guess I'm looking for a show of blue hands on whether you support the bill. Well, I should put me up there. So I've got one, two, three. Four. Okay, I've got enough. Pe so there's enough people to vote the bill out. That was that was my main concern or question. Um, so we'll continue to work on it. Um, do people want to see a redraft with the change in the report date and the change on the effective date? Generally, yes. I mean, yes. Not yes. to do those. Um, and I think I'll ask for a draft um, on the uh, requiring that the parent also be a citizen when they certify. Um, Jim, uh, uh, I think, made the comment that that would implied, I'm not sure about that, but um, we'll get a redraft that says that. Um, and we'll have um, have legislative council and next time we take it up to talk about the compliance hunter safety issues, just so we can either be reassured that they're covered or make a change. In and at that point, um, I will, once we have all that, my hope is to um, get, a, uh, get a vote on the bill. Um, and George wants to jump in. Go ahead. Yeah, the other <clears throat> unresolved issue is this issue of Vermont residency. And I, you know, I'd like to get a sense of the, the rest of the committee, how they feel about, okay. uh, about that. Yeah, I, I can speak for myself. I'm persuaded that we should not have a Vermont residence requirement, but um, let me, uh, let me get a few people to jump in, Emily. Um, I think um, towards what Lewis said about the fact that we're trying to right a historic wrong that did not involve the specific orders that are now Vermont is a really important part of this to me. And so um, enforcing arbitrary borders sort of around Canada and New Hampshire seem um, out of the spirit of the bill. So I would rather leave it as is. 
the people um, want Janet, I, I, I agree also with, um, for the exact reasons that Emily just cited that uh, I think this is a, an important bill um, to address very, very serious past wrongs. Uh, maybe I'll ask the question the other way. Are there other people besides George who would like to look at a, a residency requirement? Pat, yes. Anyone else? Okay. Um, I don't see anyone else. Um, so I won't take it off the table. If you want to uh, get something prepared and try to convince the committee, you are obviously welcome to do that. Um, at the moment, it looks as though a majority of the committee would not want to incorporate that change. So um, when, next time we take it up, if you want to bring it back up, that's fine. Um, so I think that is it. I have a, Sam, I have a noon meeting, so that's why I'm running to the finish line here. But. Okay, uh, maybe this can be really quick. I'm just wondering how functionally it would work. You would still get a license, right? That we, you know, you have tags. It's not that you just have your card that says I'm a citizen of a tribe and you're free to hunt to any amount. You still need to have a license to the tags. And that's what the revocation was about that Lewis. I think that's right, and that that's what we'll hear from legislators when we have a little more time to explore it. But yes, I think I think what's what this bill does is it says you get that permanent license for free if you meet certain requirements. But we'll we'll delve into it a little bit more. I'm sorry to be in a rush with it. I've got I've got a meeting that starts right at noon, um, and so I um, I'm going to have to uh, close this down before we're ready. Bill, did you want to jump in before I did that though? Yeah, I just want to, you're going to have another draft. Did you mention changing the effective date that Lewis, Lewis had requested? Yeah, okay. yeah, we'll do that. We'll do a draft that changes the report, changes the effective date. Uh, we'll look at language on the parent being a citizen and, um, and we'll hear about the, I call it hunter safety compliance question, um, but we won't get a redraft on that. And uh, Pat and George, if you want to prepare language on the borders issue, um, I will look at it. My sense at the moment is that there wasn't uh, support on the committee for that. But, um, but if you want to uh, make the case, that we'll give you time to do that. Um, so that is it. We're looking at education finance tomorrow. I may carve out a little bit of time for this bill if I can, um, if we're gonna have the draft ready, um, just so we can make a decision and move it along. Um, thank you everybody for a uh, good discussion and we'll see you tomorrow, I guess at nine. Is it nine? It's okay. nine o'clock and I am ending the live stream now. Good.